Hello and welcome to Gearock Farms. Today is going to be a fencing video and can you believe it? Looking at my attire, it's the end of April. Just to give you guys a day to reference. You'll probably be seeing this a bit later, but it's the end of April currently and today it's a high of like 36, 37. A little bit of snow flurries this morning and some mix of sleet there. None of it really stuck, but I'll still count it. We still got some snow, technically. Sure is an interesting spring here in Wisconsin. We're gonna try to stay ahead of things because eventually everything will just happen and, and it'll be time to get in the field. So we're gonna go do some fencing today. We're gonna put up an electric fence. So I hope you all enjoy it. this fence is kind of strategic and then once we get over the hump here then it's a fairly straight shot to where it will reel out really nice and we'll be able to make some pretty good progress but starting off you gotta kind of get everything laid out and straightened out and, but it'll start moving here shortly if you guys want to know any of the details about the equipment we're using or the posts we're using uh, we, we have a video from I think last year around this time where we went through the tools and the the type of posts and things we use for our temporary electric fence. We like to rotationally graze, I guess you could say, in a way, where this field we're on to the right there, that'll be hayed for first crop and harvested as little square bales. And then the rest of this field on the left here, that'll be all pasture. 
and then after first crop then the stuff on the right will be pasture for the rest of the year so they got plenty of nice grass on the rest of the pasture to start off And if we do it like this, we don't need any clips. Because God knows some of those will end up getting lost in the grass. For dairy cows, this soft wire is sufficient. Yeah, so we'll kind of go in long sections like this. As you can see, Dad got way out ahead with a T-post. And now Owen's driving to him. But Owen's got to make sure that that wire stays out from under the four-wheeler so that he doesn't catch it and break it off. And then we keep a pile of our electric fence posts back here. We space them out every about nine, ten steps. And that gives us some pretty decent spacing on our long stretches. But like I was saying, on our corners and the end of the fence, we like to stack it up a little bit more. I like to put a T-post every so many yards, especially on like hilltops to help strengthen that up. Get the, the sag out of it. And then we got a nice straight line to walk along. Keep our fence nice and straight. And now we run our post. Now we got the line pulled nice and straight in tension, so we got a nice straight line. Now we can start putting posts in and then tie them down. The posts have been going in real nice because the ground's pretty wet and nice and soft. It's real easy to just push them in. Even the T-posts, when it comes to pounding them down on the ground, it doesn't take a whole lot.
didn't quite make it. I had to splice in a new section. Let's see when we wrap it, that we use what? Two, three inches on each wrap. Adds up. And you had like five extra feet there, but then all them posts you know, adds up. It's nice if you can find a gun someplace nearby. Oh, I'm seeing one. Sometimes I'll break it back a little further because if we have a problem sometimes this summer, I can cut a chunk of this off. Another cool trick we want to show you guys. I just had the trouble here on this T post getting this new clip on. So, anyways, it would, uh, you're fighting it here where it wouldn't quite stretch over the top, especially when they're brand new and some of the posts aren't the same size as what the they're clips are. They're thicker here, they're wider. There's, there's, there's a lot more iron in here. So if you have these clips and T-posts and you can't quite get it around this back edge here, snap it on. Dad if you just don't have me. fingers like I got, yeah. you know, then you then see, I just try, I just figured this out here up there. Because we just bought a bunch of clips again, but I hook it behind there and then you push here and pull here. Now that one came pretty easy, but the first time it really didn't. Probably see what happens is this little kink eventually will start to straighten when the sun hits it and everything. So your other clips almost act as like a pliers or a tool to help stretch that enough. Yeah, just a little trick for those of you that don't have those real strong hand fingers and you can use that, pull that behind. Because you're going to have more of these anyway. Yep. It's being resourceful. We're using what another, we have. Another fencing tip. Yeah, instead of having a whole other tool of some sort. How many feet or how many yards do you think this electric fence is? Say we're... Well, because we're not perfectly straight, because it kind of curves up and down, we're, we're a good quarter mile. We're over a thousand easy. This is the easiest stretch because it's straight and then now there's no grass yet. See, so what'll happen is that cows will graze there. This will be growing up as hay, so we get to what, mid-June or whenever the weather's fit. We'll cut this, make this for dry hay for calf barn heifer stuff. And then we pull this out. So then the cows from the permanent pasture, which is up here, where it's more hilly and crooked and stuff. They used to work a lot of this too, way back, back in the 40s, 30s, 40s. There's some small fields, some top hill and some pockets, but there's some sand moles in here and stuff. Got a pond over there now. So that's kind of our program. And then through here, we got this big highline pole that I put in here way back. You don't remember me putting this in. No, nope. probably weren't here yet. But this used to be the old line fence between uh, my farm and what this 40 was part of another farm that went up through here. And then, then over in here, this is basically we're below the white bunk, which we call it, where the half or dry cow pasture. So we'll put, if all these T posts get put in down through here, I don't know if you can tell, there's a rule of netting. So right in there. Yeah, that, that's a rule of netting, which rolling it down the hill, you gotta be careful, don't take off and go the wrong direction, but we roll that out. And I suppose between three of us, it takes a little longer than this, but we, we don't put electricity on it. So that divides my heifers and dry cows yeah, from so my milking. Yeah, so the heifers and dry cows get this side, and then the milking herd gets that side. So what it is, it's, a, it's just another pasture as the summer wears on, because the biggest punch of grass is gonna be May, early June. By the time you get to July, we got the hay made, and then sometimes if it's if it's raining pretty good and there's plenty of other grass, we'll let this grow up a little bit. It's like a new treat for them. Yeah, spreads yeah. it spreads out the grass it, over the year. It extends their pasture, so yeah, that works really good because this is such a hilly up and down field too, and that really works well. And then down in there, it's a little bit wetter kind of lower ground so if we get a drier summer that usually puts out pretty good so that's always something extra. There you go there's a little bit of a, a fencing uh, tip and update but we're gonna head back to the yard grab some post and then unload the trailer. Before we leave, we gotta hook up the fencer. We got one of those solar fencers out here. So what I do here is we wrap it around one of these twice. 
Otherwise it won't stay on there if something. Now the bigger concern is going to be the deer. And the deer are going to run through here and maybe, maybe they'll see it. But the first few days really. So I don't think the cows are going to be here. It'll be probably at least a week before we're able to put the cows here. But what happens is it usually always works out like this. About the time we can start going back in the fields, planting corn and oats, that's when it's time to put the cows out. So we just have to open the gate. And then I have to take the four-wheeler and check this line to make sure it's all up. Might check it before then. But... And Owen's going to test it. We're all going to hold hands. All right, so show them how Dad's going to test it here. Yeah, I just got plastic handle on this thing. and hope it doesn't I touched the up. wire. and I If you look real close, you can... You can either hear it or I see a little spark. Now these, these, this solar fencer, I just took off the shelf in the shop. That hasn't been out in the light or the sun, which charges that a little bit. It doesn't take much for Holsteins. They respect this enough. I, I think beef cattle, either. There. you'd probably have to have something a little hardier. Yeah, if these guys know of any good fencers, let us know in the comments. Because it seems like every couple of years you're buying a new one. Oh, just almost every year now. But they don't hold up and then what they do I think lightning gets them. Right, so they sell this device that you can put in between the wire and the fencer to help protect that, like a fuse. Yeah. Well, why? I don't understand why they don't just incorporate it right into this outfit to start with. So there's just a small piece, you know, it should be part of it or attached to it. Yeah, so if you guys know of any good solar fencer brands, let us know. We'd be interested to hear. Yeah. yeah this is what we find in our farm stores locally. And I mean, they're, for what they're, they're fairly, for what they're doing, they're pretty inexpensive, really. You had to... It's more when you're moving fences all the time. Then you just, your, your power source goes with you. You don't have to keep extending it from your home base. Now, another way to test electric fences is to get yourself an electric fence tester. We had a company from overseas, Ireland, I believe, that was kind enough to send us a bunch of these. They're called boundary blades. They're in kilovolts. It'll still give you an idea if you got voltage running through your fence and, and how strong it is. So the way this blade works, it's a pocket knife. And it also is an electric fence tester, so a two for one. And they got uh, like different uh, size uh, holes here to act almost like a wrench. Your tool here, then you hold your button. See it lights up green. Nothing. Touch it. There you go. We got power there. And you don't get shocked either. I've gotten shocked using the shovel. So nice, convenient way. Small little tester. Super grateful they sent us this. Nice little tool. So that is going to be it for the video. We got everything put away. Thanks for coming along with that fencing of ours. It was nice to get that done and out of the way. It's kind of a bummer that the weather hasn't uh, been in our favor lately, but soon here. I imagine well by the time this video is out, spring should finally be here and we'll be hard at her. If you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to see more of us, check us out on all our other social media pages like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all that good stuff. And also, uh, we have a P.O. box if you'd ever want to send us something. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.